All right, everyone. So um, first things first, welcome to this edition of CloudWalks Paper Club. Um, my name is Victor, and I will be presenting um, this white paper. It's still unpublished called Boosting Theory of Mind Performance in Large Language Models via Prompting. Right. So it's a paper written by Shima Mokadam and Christopher Honey. Right? And it's a bit different from what we usually do, which is a lot of statistic based papers. It's very focused on prompting, LLMs. And just one little detail is that while Mogadam is a post postdoctoral AI researcher, right? So, very um, what we're used to, Honey is a cognitive neuroscientist, right? That works in the computational sphere. Basically, what that means is that um, he focuses mostly on how do we represent thought processes that happen in the brain computationally, right? So trying to replicate neuroscience um, in simulation. And recently that has been going on a lot with neural networks, right? Because of the characteristics of the neural networks that approximate to how humans learn. So embedding and encoding that learning. All right, so just to start with a brief description of the paper. Um, I think we all know at this point what LLMs are. So large language models like ChatGPT and all other varieties like Llama or Claude or all of those that we, uh, we're already used to. Um, so what these two researchers were looking into is if um, large language models were capable of performing theory of mind tasks, right? So what are theory of mind tasks? I wrote up a brief summary here. So I'll show you guys an image to kind of exemplify what I'm talking about. So basically the idea is that theory of mind is understanding that there are different states of thinking and different informational states outside of your own, right? So if we think about it in terms of children, we have, for example, the peekaboo um, effect where if you hide your face from a very small child, the child genuinely believes that you are not there anymore, right? So it's that kind of presence. So object permanence is part of theory of mind. It is children not understanding that if they don't know something, you might know it, or if you don't know something, they might. So it's this kind of informational asymmetry that requires you visualizing someone else's mental state and mental beliefs, right? So... There are pretty much, in term, in philosophical terms, there are two major paths in this, which is, first, that artificial systems are emergent systems in which a mind with the capacity to understand other minds might emerge, right? And the second, like, a um, hypothesis, which is philosophically espoused by a philosopher called John Searle, is that AI does not present subjectivity or intentionality, right? So it does not have a mental state. Therefore, it cannot comprehend other people's mental, other uh, instances of mental states, right? It's just probabilistic and it's basically just combining um, syntactic information in order to infer, like predict the next token, right? It doesn't really understand. In any case, the idea of uh, this paper is to simulate this kind of theory of mind rationality, right? So um, let's give it an example. So let's say that Sarah is um, has a favorite pair of shoes. She or is organizing her room and she's putting the shoes inside of her closet, right? So that she knows where it is later. She has a little sister, Monica. While Sarah is out, Monica comes in, messes around with the things, and kind of shoves the shoes underneath the bed, right? So the question that we're going to ask the model, and this is a thing that we ask people as well, is where will Sarah look for the shoes when she's back, right? So little picture here to exemplify where Sarah is going to look. And the correct answer is that Sarah, based on the information that we have, is going to look inside the closet because that is where she last left the shoes, right? The thing is, if we present this kind of situation to, a, to an AI model, to a person, up to a certain age, the child, for example, cannot really comprehend that there are different states of being, for example, Sarah and Monica kind of um, tracking all of the, those mental beliefs and states. 
So a child might say that Sarah is going to look under the bed because that's where the shoes are, and they're going to be adamant about it, and large language models do that too, um, when in fact Sarah should look in the closet because that's where she left it, right? So her belief is that the shoes are in the closet, while um, the information, like the true reality, does not conform to that. But it's that kind of distinction that we're trying to present here and trying to elicit from the lens in this paper. Right? So why that is important, basically, it's tasks related to social understanding and in dealing with people, so more complex scenarios. So a very clear example of that would be a chat box. So understand that there is information that a company might need to know or that a person might need to know or that someone doesn't know something and they have to explain it to them as if they really did not know it, right? So it's a very um, advanced cognitive capacity, which is very present in humans and some other animals. I mean, I think dogs have some of it, dolphins, but it's uh, basically how people and other beings represent reality in their minds as composed of different subjective states, right? Um, okay. So just this quick introduction is that theory of mind really does involve inferential reasoning. So you have to infer what someone else thinks based on the information. So that is going to pop up again, especially when we're talking about some newer models. That is a, how that works is, well, you got to think like, oh, hidden mental states. Is someone hiding something? Do they know it? Do they not know it? So it um, has to be inferred from context rather than par parsed from surface text. Right, so we are very used to when we're talking about LLMs passing context into the um, into the prompt, for example. So we give the prompt some information, and the thing is, it has to the model and the way that the thinking is structured has to be able to separate what is passed as information and what people actually know. Right, so that is a question. For example, when we're talking about a chatbot, if we pass some information like, "Oh, the customer isn't supposed to know this." the LLM can't differentiate, right? It can't differentiate that um, the different mental, the mental states and like the separation of information. Um, in this case, they are, they start to, the authors start talking about in context learning, which is basically going from zero shot, shot to few shot demonstrations. Um, so basically few shot demonstrations is giving examples at inference time, right? So in the prompt, so you're going to exemplify, I'm going to show you what each of these means in a while with examples. Um, and they also try to check if chain of thought reasoning, so thinking step by step, asking the model to explain its reasoning, makes theory of mind um, reasoning better, right? So improves theory of mind reasoning. So they are going to try with zero shot, shot examples. So an example like the one I gave you, they're going to ask the model to think step by step, and they're going to give it a few examples to see if that improves the performance of the reasoning, right? Um, the thing is, usually with, there's been some a few of these studies before, but usually what they do is they ask the LLMs to output either yes or no. So would Sarah know where her shoes are? Yes, no. And that really does not work with LLMs because we have observed and it's also been empirically observed by us here at Cloudwalk, that LLMs actually do perform a lot better with the step-by-step, -step, right? So when they have the causal reasoning chain, it's something to do with probabilities. We don't really exactly know how that would work, but the performance tends to be better and the results tend to be um, better in general, right? So. Basically, the idea of the paper here, the explicit again, is to determine whether LLMs do improve, do exhibit improved theory of mind performance when provided with suitable prompts. And then further, if effective prompting techniques guide LLMs towards generating higher quality theory of mind responses, right? This will contribute to the overall reliability of the reasoning, and it does make the LLM more useful for just general applications. Right. And um, especially if we're thinking about customer interaction or mark more complex scenarios. So um, they tested this out with a couple of models. So a few, most, all of them from the OpenAI families. Um, there were GPT-4, which is the most recent and most powerful one. And then DaVinci, DaVinci 2 and 3 and GPT 3.5 Turbo. Right. Something that we have to keep in mind is that 3.5 Turbo 
was originally made for ChatGPT. So it's an assistant chat-based um, interaction models. They standardized um, the like the settings, so the temperature equal to 0 0.4, maximum limb, so that they have some reliability. And one very important distinction is that from DaVinci 2 onwards, they started using um, reinforcement learning through human feedback, right? So that ends up impacting the model's performance quite a bit, and that's something we'll see as we go forward in the paper. Um, so the experimental design was quite simple. They presented a couple of control scenarios, which is basically, okay, so they gave you, they gave people a picture, right? They give a picture scenario. So in this case, just to exemplify, the scenario is a map shows the ground floor plan. A photocopy was sent to the architect yesterday, but at the time the kitchen door was missing. It was added to the map this morning. So it's basically just a picture. It's a snapshot of a scenario. So the question would be, does the architect's photocopy show the door? And then for theory of mind, it would be something along the sign lines of the shoes that we mentioned, right? So in the morning of the dance, Sarah pays her high heel shoes under her dress and then went shopping. That afternoon, her sister borrowed the shoes and put them under Sarah's bed. Where does Sarah look? So the thing is with humans, we're talking about, um, how we are optimized to think about things, the performance across photo and theory of mind scenarios is very similar, right? So either by looking at a snapshot or looking at a more complex scenario, we can kind of understand the nuance and infer based on other people's states, other people's perceived and inferred state of minds, what is going to happen, right? So the performance is more or less similar. So it's used as a control because the LLMs tend to work better on photo information scenarios and on theory of mind, states of mind, inference scenarios. So that was pretty much how it was designed. And then the study compares, compares the performance between the both, right? Um, all right, so they basically just ran it a bunch of times. They ran it 20 times just to account for um, bad predictions, right? And then they and just to account for just different generations, because with humans, you can kind of nudge them towards an answer, but with LLMs, it doesn't really work. Just they ran it a bunch of times just to make sure. Um, and they created basically a scoring system, which was very subjectively human, right? So instead of just having the yes or no and just a binary answer like they had in the big, like at, the, at other situations and other papers, they subjectively evaluate it as humans, right? So a couple of correct responses are, for example, Sarah placed her shoes under the dress, but her sister borrowed them. So that's the reasoning. Sarah doesn't know that her sister borrowed them. And then example three, Sarah may assume. So there are different, they're assumed they're still under the dress. Is that where she placed them? So that would be a correct answer. So it's different responses, but they all kind of mean the same thing. It means that the LLM understood, right? The theory of mind scenario. And then incorrect responses and same thing. So very subjective. Sarah does not assume, very categorical. And then just kind of understanding, just a reasoning through. And um, one very important point is that example number five here does, example number five or six, when there is an unclear situation, right? So an unclear answer is like, oh, we cannot know. It's too little information. It was characterized as an incorrect response. Because I mean, you could have inferred based on the situation and humans do. So that is a fail on, in terms of theory of mind. And that will be relevant in a little bit when we're talking about a couple of the more recent uh, chat-based models, right? Um, so basically, they use zero-shot prompting, step-by-step -step prompting, um, using examples, and um, chain of thought reasoning. So basically just a bunch of different prompting techniques. Here are some of the examples. We can look through them a bit later and maybe talk through them a bit later. I think it might be more interesting. But basically, let's have a look at the performance, right? Just so we could have a baseline um, performance. So in general, when we're talking about zero shot accuracy in photo questions, so just the information I'll, uh, just laid out in the beginning and just what is the result? We see that the models from the oldest to the newest increase consistently, right? So the Vinci 
uh, got it, Da Vinci 2 got it right 76% of the time. And then there's an incremental result going up to GPT-4 with 94% of the time being correct. So even higher than humans, humans being around, if I'm not mistaken, 86% accuracy. Um, and then in theory of mind questions, we see kind of an interesting behavior. We see Da Vinci starting out with performance, which is 68%, and then going down in the three version, the 3.5 version, and then going up again uh, massively in the four version. Um, this is commented later in the paper, but the thing is, it's less about the models getting better, and it's more about how assertive the model is, right? So Da Vinci 2 was very, very assertive, even if it's wrong, and 3.5 Turbo, because it was tuned on chat interactions, and because it was made for chat GPT, it tends to be a lot more cautious, right? Um, so it's a lot of uncertain answers. Oh, we can't know. Oh, this is uncertain. Um, but what's interesting is that we can, when we get to chat GPT, when we get to GPT-4, we have quite good performance, right? So 79%, it's higher than Da Vinci 2, which was the original one, but it's still a bit lower than human's performance, which is again, 86%. And now have, let's have a look at the performance when supported by prompting, right? So keep this in mind, uh, this kind of performance, we can come back to it later, but let's have a look at the performance. So if we're talking about Da Vinci 2, we can see decent performance with zero shot, but again, a very um, Dunning-Kruger kind of assertive, assertiveness. Um, it's very stable, it's very low, so around 63 to 68%, right? Da Vinci 3 does see some improvement when we're adding the prompting technique, so improvement in zero-shot prompting, two-shot chain of thought prompting, and then two-thought two um, chain of thought prompting, and then step-by-step uh, -step thinking, so very good improvement and very positive performance, right? We can actually compare here the two shot when we when we use prompting on davinci 3 we have as good a result in general as we have with zero shot gpt4 um with gpt 3.5 turbo we have an amazing improvement right so we go from around 50 percent which is the lowest um with zero shot prompting up to 91 percent which is on par with gpt4 and it's better than humans when we're talking about uh, two shots of examples chain of thought and step by step and with GPT-4, we achieve 100% accuracy, which is, in this case, in this experiment, better than humans. It is already better than humans when we use step-by-step -step thinking. So just adding less things step-by-step -step already makes it better than humans in terms of performance or pretty much on par, right? So 3% difference um, when compared to that 86%. Um, in general, the thing is, prompting enabled all the reinforcement learning due to human feedback trained models uh, to achieve accuracy higher than 80%, right? So prompting techniques do work a lot better with um, models that had human interference in the training process, right, that were reinforced by humans. So that is very positive, and that is a very positive thing we're talking about if it's um, okay to use, for example, GPT 3.5 versus GPT 4, if we're talking about more complex reasoning scenarios, and in this case, theory of mind prompting. Um, okay, so the authors bring up this interim discussion, which is quite interesting, which is some of us might think, like one of the hypotheses is, oh, is the model literally just copying the reasoning format that we presented in the examples, right? Um, what uh, became clear over the course of the experiments was that even though in examples, like in, in situations where we gave examples with reasoning for different events. So let's see, I think there's an example here. Um, here. Okay, so for example, in cases where the in-context examples were Person P was not at location L when event E happened, so they are not aware of event E. Even if this was the example, the model was able to have success even in cases where the reasoning was. Event E happened when person P was not there, but when P arrives, they can see the result of event E, right? So it's not a direct translation of how the logic works. 
And it means that the model is generalizing more than was expecting originally, or that the hypothesis would show. So instead of copying a specific thinking format, it is actually kind of generalizing the kind of thought process that it should go through, right? So it's more of a lot of structure than of a general situation, which is a lot like humans think, right? So a uh, structural way of thinking, so structural logic instead of just copying and learning case by case. Um, so um, they focused on theory of mind questions, almost always re um, return to the, so what, one second. Um, benefiting from the in-context th chain of thought examples, they almost always return to definite response, which did not require any subjective interpretation, right? So the response as interpreted by humans is like, okay, this is correct, this is right, no issues here. Um, yeah, so this was the interim dis discussion and then going on to basically the general discussion and the general conclusions. So when comprehension tasks required reasoning about superficially observable information, um, sort of photo, photo scenarios, the zero shot comprehension increased from the beginning to the end, which is what I brought up earlier. So very good reasoning across the board, right? So interesting performance across the board with theory of mind prompting really did improve the performance even more. So it made the performance quite a lot better, especially when we're talking about the more recent models, which were tuned to be a lot more cautious, right? So ended up even improving upon the human's performance, which is something that I brought up quite a bit over the course of the paper, the course of the presentation. Um, again, Da Vinci too did really benefit from the prompting techniques, but Every one of the models that had been trained on human reinforcement learning and human feedback got a lot better. Um, and then there's the contrast of the GPT 3.5 turbo and zero shot conditions versus prompting conditions, which is related to this kind of tuning and the um, interaction that the model is expected to have in the case of GPT 3.5. So that is what the authors theorize. Um, so, Let's see, pretty much, yeah, I think the general conclusion of the paper is that when we're talking about prompting, we're talking about great improvements in this kind of higher level, more human-like inferential reasoning, right? And trying to infer different mental states in other agents. And that is something that is confirmed by quite a few papers at this point. It's been confirmed by the things step by step, so like inferring more complex scenarios. And it is unclear based on this paper whether it is due to actual theory of mind performance or just higher level inferential logic um, thinking, logical thinking. Um, so that's quite interesting. It's an avenue for further interpretation, but I think that yeah, future, future research could uh, benefit from that. One thing that is very clear and has to be very much um, brought up at the end of the discussion, right, is that the data does not mean that LLMs possess a mental faculty, right? LLMs do not think, LLMs are not brains. But um, they do benefit from treating them as if they could benefit from as if they could have this logical model of mental states, right? So it is better to have them reason through it as if they were a human, to kind of simulate how a human would think, especially since humans were very much involved in how it was trained, right? So in trying to mimic human behavior and human brain functioning, we can achieve quite good results with LLMs, even if at the end of the day, they do not represent a perfect one-to-one um, -one comparison or basically even a simulation of how humans think. Um, LLMs are expected to get better and better at more and more complex and context-sensitive reasoning. So this kind of nuanced, more human-intensive investigation is quite interesting. And it does 
and thinking about LLMs in terms of human psychology and human physiology really does um, benefit the prompting patterns, like if you're going forward in, in general. And yeah, so conclusion, yes, um, we can exploit chain of thought and step-by-step -step instruction and examples to substantially improve LLM performance and approximate it to human level performance in certain tasks. Um, and now just finishing up, just right outside the paper, I do believe that the next frontier of dealing with LLMs and machine learning models and how we interpret the output of these models really is related to neuroscience, right? So whether it's in terms of memory or thinking, complex reasoning, I think that's the future. And I think that's the discussion that we could more or less have here today. I don't know if you guys are of the same opinion, but um, now I think is the time to open up for questions and to hear what you guys think or have to say about this, right? Well, thanks, Victor. Really nice synthesis of the paper. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments? Well, okay, so I think I can go then. Uh, I think uh, really interesting, right? I, I, did, I, I didn't know this term before, right? Theory of mind, right? And now how it relates, right? It's not just the state, but also consider like the other agents or uh, subjects, I don't know, like what they know, right? I think that's the main mm -hmm. idea. Uh, and, and I think it's really interesting how we've, uh, you know, basic prompting, uh, you can, you know, increase your, increase not, <laughs> improve your results. Uh, of course, there's a thing, some parts of the paper that I think maybe it's a bit, uh, you know, like it's just 16, right? Cases that mm -hmm. they have, right? So it's kind of like, a, it, look, it seems like a small number, uh, but I also, I don't know how, <laughs> if like uh, increasing would be, you know, it, yeah, in, in this case, um, what they did was that they based these 16 questions. Uh, those 16 questions are something that is used to evaluate theory of mind in humans. Yeah, yeah, right? yes, 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 so yes. They yes. tried to establish kind of like a be uh, baseline benchmark using human performance and human performances, usually on limited amount of cases. I don't know if, uh, I don't know how one could deal with that going forward. Yeah. If there's a way, you know. Yes, yes. No, I no just a uh, really just one point. Right. Also, I think it's really interesting how uh, that uh, how the performance, like uh, for zero shot, increases monotonically, but then for the the mm -hmm. for the control group, and then for the theory of mind, they have like uh, Da Vinci, like is page uh, what? It's page seven, I guess. Uh, um that they have like oh da vinci 2 is better than the other models and then gpt4 uh -huh. increases i think it's it's interesting right because it i think it goes with the the thing of uh what you said that uh, oh the, the the errors that they make that's something that they put on future work right mm -hmm. that uh, they say like oh yeah this this uh, models that are not like built like an assistant, they they will give a, a answer even though it's very wrong. Which is a thing that I think everyone that works with LLMs is very afraid mm -hmm. of. Uh, but then the assistant ones, they 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 gave wrong answers much more. Like oh wait a minute, there is not enough information. They were much more afraid of that. Right? I think that's what as an interesting point. Uh, I think Tamar yeah, GPT 3.5 was very uh oh we can't really know it's very cautious right so mm. like I mean it does make sense if you're thinking about it in terms of chat GPT and like per a person interacting with it more and more and it's, mm -hmm. um Tamar um I was talking about um yeah let, let me just yeah. read the question yeah no no I have it open okay. here Okay. Uh, at the end, you mentioned that by using this process, one can improve the performance of LLMs in certain tasks. Um, maybe you specified and I didn't hear. Could you provide examples? So it would be this kind of like belief tasks. So knowing that different agents are interacting in the world and understanding what different beliefs and like um, 
different understandings are, more complex social and logical reasoning tasks, right? That are not just, oh, look at this information, based on this information, answer this question. It is inference. So um, let's say Victor has never seen the ocean, so Victor can't accurately draw, draw so it can infer that Victor can't accurately draw the ocean. So more complex reasoning tasks that wouldn't be evident. So for example, it's not just, oh, one plus one equals two, and then what is one plus one? Two, right? So it's less simple, it's more um, nuanced, right? Yeah, and I think he, idea. Yeah, and I think that's really interesting thinking about uh, you know, users of LLMs as agents that do interactions, right? Because then, like, it's not like you said, they have, like, just, uh, they know the situation and try to come up with answer. Uh, it has the potential, right? Of course, have how to model that. Uh, mm -hmm. But you have the this potential that they may, uh, I think, like I said in the conclusion, like, not understand not that they think, but if you give the, provide the necessary information, uh, their answer can be more tailor made for regards mm -hmm. like what the person knows or not doesn't know or shows or not shows right i think it's a thing that's really interesting yeah i think yeah i think that's the main thing i think the main thing is this i think this is one of the main con main things in the paper which is the contribution to overall reliability right yeah even apart from the philosophical implications of understanding theory of mind, this is a very key positive feature and very useful when we're talking about these models um, and using them for like anything we use them for in a company or as students even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing that I think it's interesting to think about is like the human performance, right? Because they give uh, as the supplement, right? So it mm -hmm. was like 125 humans and they varied uh, ranges of age. Uh, and then like they give each human 18 seconds to read each scenario and then come up with the answer, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a thing that, uh, I don't know, it's it's like, uh, I don't know, like how, how could we also check this, right? Because they had like a limited amount of time to to at least read the thing. And now I think, just thinking about like, it would make sense to create any type of uh, comparison as well, right? I think not now because we are only get getting the performance of the LLM, but I think in the future it could be interesting to think about like uh, the performance by, you know, the latency and stuff like that of the models, right? Because the models are getting larger and larger and uh, like they should get, uh, you yeah, know, they do. They do time. comment that here, right? So, making a direct quantitative comparison between humans and LLMs is not really warranted, but it's useful as kind of a benchmark, right? And to kind of establish, I think the most important part was to establish the accuracy between the control and the theory of mind scenarios. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think yeah, that's really like right. The photo and theory of mind they have really similar results on humans which is the, you know, it's kind of, it's not uh, the same for the LLMs, right? Regarding the zero prompt. And I mean, it does make sense. I mean, humans are in general, very good at inferring other people's mental states, right? And beliefs. I think if we have any psychologists here, they can <laughs> confirm that or not. 